Hi, I'm glad you could join me. Uh, so today I'm going to deal with a very technical subject, uh, but I'll try as always to use basic language for everyone's, everyone's understanding. So today's subject is around the issue of technical directors and technical uh, advisors. Is a difference between the two, the two, and in terms of their roles and the duties that they have to perform. And I'm also going to look at uh, which of the two do we do we do we really need in our football, as far as the Zambian landscape and African landscape generally is concerned. Let's try and get into into it. Who is a technical advisor? A technical advisor is basically a person that gives you advice and information about uh, a particular a particular subject. This person is considered an expert. And so in football, this is a person that will give you advice and valuable information as far as football is concerned. On the other side, a technical advisor is a person that focuses on other things other than the day-to-day -day, uh, football. Let's try and unpack all this. In the most basic of terms, a technical advisor is like a glorified vision of a coach and this person sits on the bench. Whilst on the other side, a technical director is someone that looks at football long term and all other things that may be related to football to try and ensure that a football team or a football institution functions and gets uh, the results that they are they are looking for. The technical advisor looks at today's football, the technical director looks at football in the long term. Having said this, I believe and strongly so that our football uh, needs more of technical directors than, than technical advisors. And if we are able to get the part of technical directors right, the technical advisors may not even be required anymore because technical directors are going to ensure that most things are put in place and most boxes are ticked so that coaches perform accordingly and that clubs and teams get whatever they are looking for in terms of long term and short term results. Having said this and believing that technical directors are in it, what is the profile of a technical director or what knowledge does a technical director need to have? Among many things is that someone must have a footballing background. By footballing background you mean either a play, uh, playing history or a coaching history. If not any of this, so someone must have a coaching qualification that enables them to understand the nitty gritties of football or angles of football. Beyond that, a technical director is supposed to have uh, to be someone that has management uh, qualities or administrative qualities, if you if you like, right? because they are going to deal with a lot of things that go beyond football. And then beyond that, I think someone that. Uh, is able to establish and maintain networks over a course of time and equally uh, have very good contacts because the other way of looking at technical director is like a ceo of an organization but practically looking at the football side and all things that are related to football to ensure that the football side flourishes this person is like a ceo among the many things what does a technical director do what are the roles of a technical director number one is that the long-term strategy has to be in place the problem that most clubs have in zambia and in africa is that they are short-sighted if i could choose that there is no clear plan or clear path as to which way they want to go. Yes, they will tell that they want to win a championship or they will tell that they want to win the, the CAF uh, Champions League. But the question is, what measures are they putting in place to ensure that they get to where they want to go? What uh, plans, what programs and what uh, has been laid in front to ensure that all those things are ticked? Those things are not clear enough chiefly because there isn't a particular person that is in charge at this club to deal with all matters relating to, to policy, planning and programming as far as the direction the football club is supposed to take and that is one of the roles that the football uh, technical director is going to do. It is to define and put up a long-term strategy for a particular club but ensure that all things that are related to that are done accordingly. By the way, this position in, in Europe sometimes is called the uh, director of football but it's just the same as uh, technical, technical director. So that is the first thing, long-term strategy. Number two that you would have to be looking at in terms of the technical director is that this person acts as an intermediary between the the technical bench and the executive or the, the the board of the club what are we trying to talk about so the board has an idea of what they want their club to be okay they want their club to be champions and then coaches also want the team to be champions however sometimes there's usually a difference between the valuations in terms of what the board is asking for and what the technical bench is acting for is asking for and so this is a person that works in between try and make sense out of what the executive is asking for to the to the coaches and equal what the coaches are asking for to the to the executive so someone has to be the bridge in between and ensure that the language from this side and this side are both matched and that the results that are sought for 
uh, you know, uh, tailed as may be as may be required. So it's basically making sense from bottom to down and down, from down to to you know to to bottom. Um, now, what is the other point that I think is important in terms of the roles of what a technical director does? He's a technical expert and brings technical expertise as far as executions are concerned. What are we talking about? This is a person that, for example, is going to take, to look at. A youth policy of a particular club, uh, club, for example. Now, at present, what you find in Zambia and in most African countries, you find a club that is supposed to be a feeder club or that is supposed to be an academy for a particular team, housing players that are even above the ages of, of 25. And then that tells you that they are already going against the policy. This is supposed to be a feeder team because someone at 25 should be hitting their peak or should be at peak time, but they are still playing in the in the youth side. And obviously, without the direction of uh, a technical director in terms of the input of what the youth policy is supposed to be, then you are going to be getting it wrong. This is unfortunately the picture in most of the of the clubs that we have at present there is there is a lack of proper direction as to what the policy around matters like in those is, is concerned beyond that you're also going to be looking at uh, the element of, of of scouting a technical director in a lot of ways supervises the the, the scouting department um scouting is very important and uh, remember that scouting cannot just be done over a course of two to three games unfortunately it's not enough scouting if anything has to be done over a, a long period it could even be two or three seasons because you have to look at the player in a lot of a lot of elements why am i linking scouting to this very key position in particular um, over the years we have seen uh, clubs make signings then after a period of two months they realize that this person is a misfit he cannot fit into their philosophy he cannot fit into their into their mythos and into the ways that they, they wish their, their club goes now the ripple effect of that is that there are going to be a lot of issues around you know conversation when you when you terminate such a contract there are going to be a lot of other costs that you are going to incur but if you have a ticket for director in place that is heading uh, that is head of the, the, the scouting department for example you're going to to, to, to minimize on some of these losses and actually even eradicate them entirely because you would have done your you would have you would have done your homework according and you're going to put things in place. The other thing, the other reason why you need a technical director is remember earlier on we said that he looks at football in the long term. Now one of the things that you need in football is foresight, it's vision, it's about uh, you know uh, predicting what could happen in the future and predicting with with facts and when you make a lot of analysis on the ground. What am I talking about? At times a team might need to set up what what you would call or an analysis zone which will, will have both match analysts and um, and performance performance analysts now this unfortunately cannot just be done by 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 the coaches at the club or by some some part timer why you need this is that you need to assess player performance from game to from game to game from season to season to ascertain if really this person has a future at the club or or not. Similarly, you need to to to, to you know to make a assessment of your of your own team in terms of the performance. Now, a technical director is going to actually remember earlier also spoke spoke about a network. He's going to 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 have a network or actually bring in people that are going to do some of these things. You know, cut the clips, for example, pinpoint what, what the key things are. So that when a coach sits and he's doing video analysis for example with his team he knows exactly what to touch on because the analysts would have already done this the job already but then these analysts are only going to come from a network that is going to be established and developed by by a technical a technical a technical director um the technical director also will give you will chart the way forward in terms of a club for example on how they are going to gain promotion uh, you know sustain they are staying in, in a particular league or you know maybe win a particular a particular championship basically what we're talking about is that this individual looks at not just the now but in a lot of ways actually looks at the long term like i said the round could be a 10 a 10 year plan guide a 10 year plan on how you're how you going to do things with a checklist on the side we're going to do a b c d and this is how we are we're going to we're going to do now the other thing that the technical director does is like he's a general general manager of, of the club. Now the general manager in a lot of ways will, will hire who hire coaches, um, you know, you hire the playing, the playing personnel, obviously in consultation with the coaches. Why is this a key position as far as the hiring of coaches is concerned? Definitely we have seen coaches that are given three months contract, six months contract, or maybe a contract just to finish six games in a particular club. But unfortunately, that is going to continue as long as we do not have people in place that are going to plan for the club don't team now. When a long-term plan is made for a club, for example, it is going to match with what kind of appointments are going to be made, what kind of signings are going to be are going to be made. 
there are times when the club is going through a very difficult situation and there are times people that are running clubs with all due respect sometimes may not really be football people in Thailand so they may not understand certain seasons or certain phases in football and sometimes they are trigger happy they will, you know, they will fire this coach when they will hire another one again fire him and you know it's all, all forms of confusion but then you need someone that is an expert to actually tell you say look maybe what has happened is, is normal but the only way we can arrest it is, it is by doing A, B, C, D not just now but also for the, for the long term for the long term plan and so this person is going to decide how you you know how you hire coaches what kind of players you're going to in to bring in and, and things and things of that sort even regarding things like uh, you know uh, negotiations player contracts the length of contracts and, and and things of that sort that's what the technical, technical director does the problem with players that are only coming because they they know the coach or the the Coaches play as if you like this is a very common term in African football. You know, that's that's that player A, A and B are for a particular coach, and so wherever he goes, they also go. The problem with that is that if this coach is fired, for example, then this player fails to perform. If this coach is fired, then this this player wants to leave as well. But when you have a technical director in place that supervises your transfer policy, they are going to look at matters and address matters of, of that sort. Bring in someone that is going to be at this club for three, four, five good seasons, then maybe after that you are going to let them go and things of that sort so that regardless of who is coming in as a coach the club is, is able to is able to perform as always i want to get your views and you know your comments if you like this this, uh, this content you know leave me a comment uh let me know what you think how we can improve this and you know if you like it you can as well share the share this content and keep the, the conversation the conversation going uh the technical director as well is going to uh, make a lot of assessments as far as uh, which areas of your club may need improvement in terms of upscaling do coaches need to you know to to improve on certain things this is the guy that is going to using his notebook for example you know uh, recommend certain uh, certain training courses certain coaching clinics and you know other things that are going to improve the performance of these people also going to look at other other stuff because remember this is not just talking about coaches it's also looking about other stuff within the club that are directly related to performance on the on the field and and off it and so it's going to ensure that where there is need for upscaling through a network you know makes the changes that are required makes the adjustments that are required and the club keeps uh, flourishing uh, flourishing going forward uh, the other thing that the technical director will do is that actually look at the commercial side of things and uh, you know other other technical interests. Now, there's always been this thought that West Africans, for example, get a lot of chance to go into France, into Europe, once they are still younger, and in, in Southern Africa it, it's a rarity. It's simply because uh, there are no technical partnerships, for example, on this side of, of, of the continent, not so many of those. And some of those technical uh, deals, technical agreements, and uh, you know things of that sort can only be done, unfortunately, by a fully dedicated uh, technical technical director. Exchange programs, you know, you find uh, things like you know you get into an agreement. For example, Zambian clubs get into an agreement with an English club where they say at the end of every season maybe they give them their best performing player to go and have a trial on the other side. Unfortunately, these things can only be put in place by people like technical directors because they dedicate their lives, they dedicate all their time to ensure that things like this happen because they know that long term they are going to give benefits to, to a particular club. Unfortunately, without people like technical directors who are, uh, you know, 100% committed to such a cause, these things may only be but just uh, just a common a common dream. And then, you know, uh, maybe finally for, for the rules for today, this one causes a lot of dust. You know, sometimes the technical director actually has to step in and, uh, you know, coach the team, especially when there's a time of crisis and maybe when there's a transition that has to be that has to be made that is why earlier on we say this person needs to have you know some 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 football some football knowledge obviously this individual doesn't come in to to to, to get the coach's job as people see it if, if if anything the person that coaches should be worried about is a technical advisor but at the end of the day if they are professional enough they equally respect that person and you know value them what they are going to bring on the table but all coaches are actually want to you know to to have success and you know be stay in jobs accordingly and gain success for themselves and the clubs that they work for should actually embrace taking good directors because of all these things that taking good directors are going to are going to you know are going to are going to give to them and and their clubs and ensure that they they succeed now in global football what are some of the examples that we have of taking good directors that had uh, have had a lot of impact and uh, you know left a lasting impression and uh, uh, 
on, on the clubs that they've worked for. There's a, there's a gentleman called uh, uh, Tiki or Tiki Begenstein. I, I I struggle with with that name. This is a gentleman that worked at Barcelona in in, in this role and was responsible for signing players like Yaya Toure uh, and Daniel Alves at Barcelona. Uh, later on, he signed players like uh, Fernandinho at at, at 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 Manchester City. Um, then you know, moving on in England, there was a Nigerian actually who worked as technical director at Chelsea. His name was uh, Michael Emenaro. He was responsible for part of the signings he made. I think was Juan uh, um, Mata and uh, Eden, Eden Hazard. He later on moved on to to Monaco and you know recorded fairly good, fairly good success there. On the African continent, where people keep thinking that some of these things cannot happen, uh, the example I would give is that of uh, Trot Molot. Uh, Trot Moloto was the uh, technical director at Mevelut Sundowns and in a lot of ways was one of the key people that uh, ensured that the current uh, uh, train that is unstoppable at Mevelut Sundowns is, is, you know, begins, to, begins to move. Trot Moloto was the technical director that was responsible for bringing on Johannes Kens, if you remember, and you know the revival at Mevelut Sundowns started. But later on, this is the person that actually had uh, Pizzo Monsimani to come to Mevelut Sundowns and was also responsible for signing of players like Kennedy Mwene and you know Dennis Onyango earlier on. And with time we've seen the kind of success that Mamelodi Sundowns have have had with some of some of these players and equally the coaches that were we are brought in place. At the moment, the Sundowns Academy is one of the best performing chiefly because of the foundations that were laid uh, some years some years back, as far back as it eight, ten years ago by uh, a ticket code director like like Trot, Trot Moloto. Um, now Let's bring it back home into the, the Zambian setup. A lot of Zambian clubs are owned and run by you know government wings or private corporations. What this means is that the people that are put in charge of running these clubs are full-time employees of the companies that uh, you know that run the clubs. Unfortunately, um, they cannot give it their best shot because look, even as if they even when they want to give it their best shot, sometimes it just becomes very difficult because primarily they are employed elsewhere and they are doing this like on a part-time basis. Imagine someone is a marketing manager at some company, they have marketing targets to meet. You really think they are going to give it the best as far as football is concerned, which is secondary. I do not think so with, with all due respect and that is why this position is supposed to be on, on a permanent permanent, permanent uh, uh, basis. Now, why do we need technical directors in the Zambian game? Similar to some of the reasons I gave at first, but among them now, why we need them in the Zambian game at present more than technical advisors and in a lot of ways they could actually help us eliminate uh, some of those things like taking call you know advisors and short-term fixes because they're not fixes at all one of the main reasons number one is that um they're going to help us get better transfers remember earlier when i spoke about uh, uh, networks in terms of scouting and things of that sort. so they're going to help clubs make better better transfers it's as simple as that technical directors are going to help clubs make better transfers which are going to give clubs long-term benefit you cannot have a club like Zesco united for example signing a player called david moringa then <laughs> Is it just after a season or half a season, this guy doesn't give you anything and you have to let him go? Imagine the cost that you have incurred to bring him in and actually to, to lose him. The other thing that taking good directors are going to do in our football is that they are going to help clubs develop long-term strategy and make appointments that are required to ensure that that strategy ticks. That being you know, the appointment of coaches, support staff and any other that are going to be relevant as far as getting the job done on the for the for the club and what they are looking for. Equally, taking good directors are going to help manage youth teams and give them better better direction in terms of the policy and also you know matters around age and the promotion strategies. Equally, uh, technical directors are going to help clubs you know gain some sort of sustainability and independence from their from their owners or from their financiers. Remember I spoke about the commercial component earlier on and if they get that part of things right then there's going to be a lot of sustainability and maybe a reduced dependence on the on the main financial sports. This is one of the reasons why our football has, has suffered. Whenever there is a threat on the financial you know, you will see key players living, you know, coaches are going to, to live, and you know, so to, to try and get some stability on that end of things as well, technical directors become very, very important. 
equally, uh, technical directors are also going to establish and maintain a connection between the club and you know the, the outside world, both in terms of you know supporters and any other where connections might be needed. You would be <laughs> intrigued to know that there are a lot of clubs which are actually claimed to be um, community clubs, but the fact is that the divide between the community and the clubs are huge. And you know, sometimes someone that is fully dedicated, like a technical director, will ensure that they put programs in place so that those connections you know, are, are established. And really, the technical director will execute any other duties as may be required to ensure that there is long term success at a, at a particular club. In summary, a technical advisor looks at football today and is like a glorified version of the coach. He actually sits on the bench. On the other side, a technical director looks at the club as a whole and looks at football long term to ensure that they success both now and in the long term. Now, if you ask me, what do we need, technical advisors or technical directors? I'll tell you our football needs a lot of technical directors. And if we're going to get it right, in all professional clubs and semi professional clubs, we'll do well to bring in technical directors to ensure that this is sustained success. Gaining success requires that systems are put in place, and some of those systems can only be put in place and begin to tick once dedicated people like technical directors are put in place, without which then success becomes just but a dream. Until next time, brother.